Hello and welcome to TDM 345 Meeting and Convention Planning. My name is Marcus Jones and I will serve as your instructor over these next second weeks. This video is designed to introduce you to what's going to take place over this course. Um, this is my first time teaching this specific course, but I've done many trainings for organizations and different colleges around ASU and other colleges on meeting planning. And so what I hope to take over this next few weeks is to take my experience, which I'll touch base on in a little bit, and bring that to you to help provide you a basis of meeting planning. Now, before we begin, one thing that I want to say about this course is that, as I mentioned, it is seven weeks. So we're going to get very, very, very high level. I'm going to provide, we're going to go, the saying is um, a mile wide, five feet deep or something like that, um, a mile wide or six inches deep. Because part of with this is, if you saw in the course description, it talks about the CMP. And when you're getting your certified meeting planner credential, you're actually going to take many, many, many classes. Each of these things we're going to talk about, some of them involve hour-long classes, some of them involve day-long, and as you do meeting planning throughout your career, you will learn that this can take a lot. So let's dive into this intro presentation. Um, we're gonna talk about introduction. I'm gonna do an introduction to myself, talk about the assignments, and then what's gonna take place over the next six weeks and as well as some next steps. So, as I mentioned, my name is Marcus Jones. I serve as Chief of Staff to the Dean at the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions, which this class is housed in, in our community, School of Community Resources and Development. In my role, I oversee strategic projects for the Dean, along with a colleague of mine, oversee all of our events, and ultimately my goal is to make sure that my Dean is able to do her job and as well as her leadership team through a variety of ways of support um, and it's significant project management. Um, prior to this role, as we'll talk about, I've served in different roles at ASU. But I've spent a predominantly a large amount of my career at a Arizona State University, but I've also done some private consulting on the side. As of this year, I also serve as the director at large for education for the North American Association of Commencement Officers, which is an association that is focused on planning academic ceremonies, primarily graduation. So I do have um, the responsibility of planning the graduation for our Watts College Public Service and Community Solutions, and as well as I close work very closely with the team at Arizona State University level to help execute their graduation. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. So let's talk a little bit about my background. As I've said, I've been at Arizona State University for 13 years, serving in a variety of capacity of project management, lots of special events, um, and whatnot. I am a trained protocol officer through the school of um, trained protocol officer through the protocol school of Washington. And what that means is, I'm sorry, my dog is touching me um, and gave me a little freak out. Um, and what that means is I am trained to really help build experiences for folks to enable business. Um, and as you heard me say, my dog, um, I do have three dogs um, in my household, so you will hear them bark throughout this course as I record videos. I apologize in advance. Um, so if you ever hear me get distracted or stop, it's because one of my dogs are doing something. I am also a certified special events professional. I chose not to do the certified meeting planner because I wanted something a little bit more broad since I do do events that are beyond your typical meeting, which is what we're going to focus on on this semester. Um, in previous years, I used to be an active volunteer of, at Phoenix Pride, primarily with responsibilities to their um, exhibitor function. Um, and I've done many, many, many more things, and I'll talk about some of that uh, in the next screen. Um, as I said, I have three dogs. Uh, here is one of them. This is Picasso. He is my approximately 10-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback uh, pit mix, um, my little baby. I am a huge Beyonce fan. Um, Renaissance has slayed me. If I had hair, it would be snatched off. And I also love to do karaoke and sing some wonderful songs. A little bit about me. Um, prior to my role as Chief of Staff, um, I was a part of the team that helped um, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, specifically on the Arizona State University side 
oversee providing operational and logistical oversight to all of our state run vaccination sites and as well as our COVID testing sites that we did around the state of Arizona. Um, so that was my van that I got to drive around. And then on the right-hand side of the screen were the three pair of shoes that I wore down over the course of the year and a half working with the COVID. So um, let's talk a little bit about my experience of conference planning. Uh, one of the biggest conferences that I am responsible for in planning, actually in a volunteer capacity, but I get to do it on work time since it does benefit work, is my NACO conference, North American Association of Commencement Officers. So I'm currently working on one uh, that will take place this upcoming February in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I've been to multiple of these conferences, um, as well as planning part of the virtual ones. So when we go through this next course material, you're going to hear me infuse a little bit a lot about what I'm doing currently for this conference. Um, and when we talk about building the team, we'll talk about how our team is organized. Uh, just this past May, I hosted um, one of the largest international conferences I've ever done. Um, it was our public management research conference. It was about just under 500 people representing many, many, many countries. Um, and it was a great conference that took place in the summer here. Um, I'm no longer a part of NASPA, National Association for Student Personnel Administrators, but NASPA is where I actually got my first taste of conference, true conference planning. Um, back in 2012 when it came here to Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and that's where I got to be a part of the host committee. And that's where I fell in love with conference planning and realized, oh my God, this is awesome. Um, I'll tell you a funny story when we get to keynote, the keynote section later in the class um, about of, of, of about keynotes. So let's get to the class. I'm gonna take a sip of water. So this is a session B course. This is seven weeks. Um, I apologize. I did have to open it a little bit, bit late, just with the close of session A work schedule. We'll talk about that later as well. Um, it's going to open a little bit later than I anticipated. But as you'll learn with me when it comes to grading and assignments, I'm generally much more flexible than rigid um, because that works for me. I have to be flex. I have to show grace. Um, because of my work, and so I will always show you all, Grace. Okay, so the book that we are going to use for this course is shown here on the screen, Meetings, Exposition, Events, and Convention, an Introduction to the Entry to the Industry, 5th edition. It's available for rent as an e-text. I highly recommend that. Um, or if you do want to buy, I think there are a lot of great things in there you'll want to keep for the future, or at least try to screenshot or scan. And what I will make sure to do is tell you when to screenshot something um, from that book to keep for the future for great reference. Chose this book because it has a lot of great current examples, some great slides. Um, I didn't change this, but it went hand in hand with our P, uh, TDM 386, which I taught in session A. So this is a continuation of the course. Um, and it's a great book. And I will also post lots of supplemental materials um, that I have that I've used over the course of my years. So let's talk about what's going to take place in this course. We're going to have three group assignments. Um, you are a large class this time around. You have 70 students. Um, so I was trying to think, how do I want to make this work that's meaningful to you? And the benefit is with conference planning, you generally do have to work in groups. Now, we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff on a very shortened, tightened schedule than, what's nor than what a conference is normally planned in. So you're gonna do three group assignments and it's not gonna be super lengthy projects, but things that I really want you to try to work on so that you understand. And all those rubrics will be posted. And as I introduce them in three different segments, you'll have about a week to two weeks for each of them. I wanna say I gave you two weeks for each of them um, to complete. And then you'll have about five discussion boards. I know that in the syllabus, I wanted to use Yellow Dig. And ultimately, I wasn't comfortable with it to get it set up the way that I want to. I need to spend a little bit more time for that. So we're going to do some more traditional discussion boards, and I'll talk about that shortly. You're going to have six quizzes. And normally, I'm not a fan of 
quizzes that are memory. Can you define this and basically look at the book? So as I'm going through my lectures and whatnot, and I design and I'm designing these quizzes, and I will do these as I create the content over these next six weeks, so that I'm making sure that I'm quizzing you in a way that allows you to apply what you've learned and apply it to real, real world examples. Um, my goal is that with every quiz, if you click the wrong answer, um, to be equitable across this, you will not get those respective points. Um, but what I will do is make sure that I provide some context on why the answer is wrong and why you should have chosen the right answer. And if I can't do that, it will it will be explained why I can't do that as well. So my philosophy on your work that you're going to do, try to do the work, don't half-ass it. For me, feedback is much more important than right versus wrong, which is why I said I'm going to do my best to provide feedback and all the answers for the quizzes. Be honest when you're struggling with something. If something is happening in life and you need more time, if you're not getting the material, if you need to meet, I'd rather you reach out to me sooner than later so that I can support you and provide you. Maybe that may be an alternative assignment or maybe make some adjustments for you based on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you reach out to me, I promise you, I will do my best to work with you within reason. Um, feel like I'm missing the slide and we'll see. And if not, I'll make sure I cover it. I think it's toward the end. So due dates. Everything is always gonna be due Sunday at 11.59.59 p.m. Arizona does not observe daylight saving time, so please make note of that. The last week of the class, obviously everything will be due on that Friday because um, that's the last day of that class. Most of our group assignments will be due over two weeks from the week that they are introduced so that it gives you time to work on the assignments with your respective groups. So for the most part of this class, your class is going to open on Monday morning. That makes sure that gives me Sunday to make any adjustments. I generally record on Sundays because throughout the week, I absolutely have a full-time job. Um, so generally, I tend to record on Sunday mornings. Sometimes I, I try to give myself a break on Saturday so that I am at my best for you all on a Sunday um, and just to give me a mental break. So I generally record on Sunday mornings so you can expect stuff to open on Monday. So, but with the exception of this, you will have stuff that will open on Sunday around 5 p.m. That's when I hope to have your first recordings done. I have half of them through. I just want to do a couple more. So what can you expect on Sunday? Two modules are going to open. So module one is going to be, what is a meeting? And what we're going to do is talk about an introduction to what a meeting is and what you all are going to be learning about what you're planning. Now, the good thing is, if you took 380, 386 with me, you can skip this portion. We're not going to spend significant time on it. I want to just make sure that people have an understanding of what a meeting is, who plans it, where it takes place, so that they can have that same baseline level for those who took 386 who are coming into this class to take this. So you can skip that. Then, now, where everyone will join is what's going to be module two. And what we're going to do is talk, start talking about what takes a part of the pre-planning phase of a conference. So when you think about most events, you have a pre-planning phase, that true planning phase, execution, the event, and then what happens after post-production at the end. This pre-planning phase is really deciding what do you want to do before you actually start making, um, coordinating and putting things into place. So what we're going to cover are SMART goals. You may have done this before, but we're going to do it in the context of creating an event. We're gonna learn about developing what your audience, or sorry, who your audience is. We're gonna begin thinking about budget and how do budgets work in relation to conference production. Developing and creating a theme. You may have done this in PRM 145, but we're gonna talk about developing themes. So for example, Actually, I'm not going to say what my theme is. We'll save that for when we actually get to it. Working with partnerships and sponsors, thinking about how you're going to engage them. 
we're going to do a high level overview of what does it take to schedule out your conference so that you understand that. And then we're going to be thinking about how do you build your team to execute this conference. So that's going to be module one and module two. Then on October 24th, a week later, we're going to open up module three, building your schedule. So now that you've identified everything that you want to do, now we're going to build your schedule. We're going to briefly talk about how do you book a hotel and what is the process and length of that. If you have to do a request for proposals, there may be times when you have to do that and what is the length for that. For some conferences, specifically if you're doing something that is continuing education granting, granting, that is something that you need to learn how to do. So I'm going to do a module on that as well. We'll talk about developing a pre-conference, which goes in lines with continuing education. We're going to learn about what takes place at an exhibit hall. So if you've done 386, you're going to, where it's going to be a little bit repetitive for you, but it's important to look at it. We're going to talk about the basics of building out your registration and a website. Um, and then as well as I'm going to introduce your first group assignment that begins thinking about your high-level schedule. Then. When you all come back from Halloween, and I'm not going to lie, this date may change to when it opens. Um, I do have a trip planned this weekend, um, that week. I am, My goal is to get everything recorded beforehand, but I am not going to lie. This may change and this may open a couple of days later. And if so, I will make sure I make the necessary adjustments for all of your points and assignments. I'm hoping that I can get it done, but should I not and I have to record on the Monday that I get back, that's all that it will be. Now we're going to get, then we will move into module four, and that's going to be speaker management and education sessions, a core chunk of what takes place at a conference. So we're going to learn about what is the process for creating and issuing a call for proposals, keynotes, speakers, and the development of that. A lot of people don't realize that designing a presentation is very much an important part of your job as an event manager and really designing what is the experience that people have throughout their conference. We're going to talk about the different type of educational sessions that can help you design your conference. And then we're going to touch base on how do you enhance your conference through other ancillary activities. Then on November 7th, that's when we're getting into some of our longer sessions. We're going to move into module five, and that's when we're going to talk about venue management. I will, based on what I'm thinking, I'm probably going to post half of the lecture in the first week and the next half in the next week because it's going to be a two-week module because there's going to be a lot to cover in this, and so, but it all falls under the same umbrella. So as we get closer, I will let you know how I'm going to approach recording some of these. But in this, we're going to talk about food and beverage, probably your largest expense generally at a conference is food and beverage. I, I can't think of anything else that's larger in my thing outside of maybe sometimes technology. So we're going to talk about food and beverage. What does it take to plan a menu? What does it take to serve all that? We're going to learn about what is the different technology involved at a conference, not just all your computers, but what is the audio visual needs? We're going to briefly touch on travel agencies and how they can support you. We're going to expand more on exhibit halls and what takes place in those. Working with your hotel and what are the room setups that are needed to do it a conference. And then I'm going to introduce your next assignment, which is going to be your venue management assignment. So that's going to take place over two weeks. Then on November 20th, which is going to be the final part of the module, the final module, we're going to put it all together and a little bit more. So we're going to take what you've talked about and then we're going to work on putting it together. And that's going to be thinking about what is that production schedule, shipping. Really, we're going to dive a little bit more into the registration and what takes place a part of that. We're going to talk about some communication tools and how you have to communicate with one another. And then as well as I do want to touch on hybrid considerations when it comes to producing a conference. I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to do that and how do I infuse it. 
Um, so we'll talk about a little bit on how you can consider doing hybrid. And ultimately, it's up to you to decide how much of that you want to take. So what else that's left? As I mentioned, I'm going to always serve grace. I have a busy job, and sometimes things can really completely derail my week. <laughs> um, it's just the nature of the job. And so with that, that means I may change up some things, but I promise this. Would I, should I change something? It will never do anything that's going to add more assignments. It will only detract assignments from you. And so that's the most it will be. It may be you may not have a discussion board or it may end up squashing a quiz. Um, group work will definitely stay, um, but things may change. And I promise you, whatever that is, I will make sure that I give you ample notice and should I, and like I said, if something happens and I can't post something on time, what's going to happen is all the deadlines will just push back even further. Um, I'm generally very flexible in my assignment deadlines. I'd rather you get it in than you rushing through it and giving me crap work. So I'd rather you get it in even if it is late versus you just putting in something just to get it in by the deadline. Um, I made the biggest mistake of recopying a, 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 my canvas from my last class and it's not working the same way that I thought it's going to work. So the canvas needs a little bit of work. So you'll see things change throughout the semester, um, but ultimately will be good for you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going back to the traditional discussion board versus yellow dates since I couldn't get that done correctly. I'm not a fan of the post and post something and write three substantial comments. I don't like that. It's boring. It is, in my opinion, a waste of time. Now, however, what I would hope that you do is look at how others respond to the questions that I pose, because you're going to have folks probably in this class who have done events and folks who have not done. So I'm hoping that you can look at each other's discussion and learn from it. Um, there's going to be things I'm going to ask you to post links or post examples, find a photo of something, depending on. And I hope that you take a look at each other's. Now, I will also post other content that I discover as I get my different professional development things or other resources, and I will post those for you, and I will make sure that in my introduction video or introduction page, if I don't do necessarily introduction video, I will make sure to tell you what's going to be quizzed on and what is just something good for you to know. That's the thing that is very fluid with this industry. There are going to be things that I've experienced that I can talk about that I think is just very important for you to know. So how to reach me. This is my um, information. My uh, phone, my phone number is there. You can uh, text me. You can put something in the discussion board. Um, a true, I would say expect an air so for a response because it depends whether or not um, I get pinged on my iPad or my phone. Um, sometimes I get logged out, and so I don't get those automatic push notifications. Um, so if I don't respond, I promise you, as I said, I will show grace. Um, you can also Slack me. I promise you that Slack or text will honestly probably be the fastest response for me um, because that's more of that instant messenger. Um, throughout this, I will also post sometimes that I want to host some office hours. I mean, you can always email me to have office hour, but I will also do some where I'm going to be available to you all for your class projects to be able to meet online. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you Sunday afternoon with our first content. I promise you that I hope that this class will be fun. I'm going to tell you lots of stories. If you met me in person before taking another class, you know that I have a lot of stories. Um, I will do my best to keep them uh, PG, but sometimes I'm not going to lie. I do curse. Um, but you will have a fun time and you'll, I hope that you will learn a lot and take away this. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day.